today I'm going to be doing a review of Dragon Forces The Power Within. And as you can see here, I have a nice little signed copy as I went all the way to Manchester from Liverpool, which isn't that far, to um, get it signed by the band so I got to meet them. And I have to say that the um, guitarist Herman Lee, I think, He's the nicest of the bunch there, but they're all really nice guys, and yeah, you know, it's a nice thing because it didn't cost any extra whatsoever, just the, you know, 10 quid for the album. Anyway, so this is Dragon Force's fifth album, and it was released on the 15th of April 2012 in the UK and April the 17th in the US. And the lineup on this album is Mark Hudson on vocals, Herman Lee on guitar, Sam Totman on guitar. Vadim Pruzhanov, I think that's how you say it, on keyboards, Dave McIntosh on drums, and f oh, this is a hard name to say, but Frederick Leclerc, yeah, on bass. So, this is also the first Dragon Force album to feature Mark Hudson on vocals, who replaces the most known vocalist, Z.P. Fiat who, you know, was on the song Through the Fire and the Flames, which is really their breakthrough song after that start on the game Guitar Hero 3, which is easily the best Guitar Hero game. And then ZP Fiat, he left the band in 2010 because of musical differences. Uh, this was a couple of years after the album Ultra Beatdown, which is the album before this. And, yeah, so this is their first album since ZP Fiat's departure. And really, they need to prove themselves with this album. Dragon Force needs to prove that they were just as strong and they did not need ZP to, you know, front the band so they could do it without him. So, does this album show that Dragon Force are better or are they lacklustre without ZP Fiat's voice? So, let's go through the track listing Holding On, Falling World, Cry Thunder, Give Me the Night, Wings of Liberty. Seasons, Heart of the Storm, Die by the Sword, Last Man Stands, and I don't really count track 10 because it's just an acoustic version of Seasons. But still, it's a nice thing to listen to, but I'm not, you know, going to be reviewing that. I'll just review the normal version of it. Anyway, so, we get to the first track, Holding On. And this really, you know, it's the first chance for Mark Hudson to prove himself as the track most people hear first, unless they just buy individual tracks off iTunes. So, this song starts out in the typical Dragon Force style of the lightning fast guitars of Herman and Sam, then Mark's voice comes in. We see that he can certainly hit those high notes. He has a really great voice, and I think his voice may actually be better than ZP's. I really like the change in voice of the band. Um, uh, ZP, I always thought he always reminded me of, I can't remember the exact name for the life of me, but the um, you know, Journey singer from the albums like Escape. He always really reminded me of that, but, um, you know, obviously on adrenaline. And um, so, yeah, you know, I think Mark Hudson, he's clearly talented, and the song itself is great. It's just everything you expect from a Dragon Force song with stupidly fast instruments and a melodic, catchy chorus, earning their name as a power metal band or even speed metal, I call it. Yeah, you know, they sort of are, you know, both genres, really. And it's a nice song to open the album, a really nice song. And then we get to Fallen World, this is the main single from the album, and I did do a track review of this a couple of months ago. It's probably now my favourite song on the album. It seems always the way of my track reviews, they always, I always end up liking the song more when I hear it on my hi-fi than, you know, just through my really bad laptop speakers. But um, anyway, it's now my favourite song on the album, and it just has a really great tune to it. And Mark's voice is especially is superb on this song. Then the chorus comes in, and it's just so catchy. I mean, of course, then you then also have the epic duel and guitar solo between Herman and Sam, but, you know, that's what you expect on a Dragon Force song, and I'd be disappointed if it wasn't there. So any Dragon Force so fan will definitely like this song. It just has all the elements that make Dragon Force, you know, so great. So we get to Cry Thunder, this is the second single from the album, and it starts out with a really nice lead guitar melody, and this melody reoccurs throughout the song, and then it carries on in the typical Dragon Force style, and I'd say it's my second favourite track on the album, if not joint first, it's a really solid track. 
and yeah, it has a, another very strong chorus and a very strong riff. It's just another classic Dragon Force song that I could listen to all day. And certainly with these first few songs, they really do demonstrate that they are back and better than ever. And this certainly, you know, the trend certainly carries on throughout the album. As we get to things like Give Me The Night, which is the next track, and that starts out with a cool little solo by Herman, and again, it just continues to the, you know, formula of to die for choruses with speedy solos and riffs. Dragon Force really is just like a, I, I think, I, I like the analogy that I've heard of Dragon Force, where they're a mixture between Bon Jovi and Slayer. Uh, I think that's true, they do have these big choruses, I mean, obviously not quite as big as, you know, stuff like Live on a Prayer, but they have, you know, really big choruses, but yet, you know, the heaviness and speed of a band like Slayer. Can't say I'm a Slayer fan. But anyway, and I think it creates a really cool combination. So, you know, I think Give Me The Night, it's, it's a good song. Then we get to Wings of Liberty, and I was looking forward to this song because I have this thing, I, you know, I always enjoy long songs, I'm, you know, a big prog fan, and I thought, oh, a song over seven minutes, is this going to be the Through the Fire and the Flames or Fury of the Storm of the album? And it started out with a piano with nothing else, um, and yeah, and it carried on with nothing else except a piano and vocals over the top. And it sounded like it was going to be a beautiful, gentle ballad, which I thought was a bit odd for Dragon Force. But, you know, this being Dragon Force, Herman and Sam soon turn up the speed of their guitars. And, I mean, for a Dragon Force song, it's probably slow, but compared to most music in the world, it's, you know, pretty fast. And it does have some truly slow bits mixed in, but, you know, it's a pretty fast song. Musically, it is actually pretty interesting. It changes tempos quite a bit. Lyrically, though, I find this song very disappointing, especially the chorus, which is just so lacklustre. I was expecting an epic song, but even the solos aren't particularly good for, you know, Dragon Force on this. It really was a song that has a lot of potential and was wasted. It's definitely not the fuel of the storm or through the fire we were expecting. One particularly nice thing about it was, though, that for once you could actually hear Vadim's playing. I find most of the time they don't use him. He's clearly a good keyboardist, pianist, whatever, but um, I don't think they utilise him at all. Most of the time I don't even notice his existence. But on this song he plays a major part, and that was nice, but this song, I felt they wasted the opportunity. Then we get to Seasons. At the beginning this um, actually reminds me a bit of Dream Theatre. Um, not much, especially as, you know, within a minute or two it becomes very distinctive as Dragon Force. And this song, I would say it's more to normal metal speed, you know, Judas Priest could keep up with this. And it has a really great chorus, and I'd say it has more of a classic metal sound to it. And there's also a bonus track at the end, as I said before, which is an acoustic version of the song. And this is very well done, and, um, you know, I think the acoustic fits, you know, this song very well. Anyway, this song is really good, and it's definitely a highlight of the album. Then it gets a Heart of the Storm, which... When I first read it, I thought they were doing a cover of Fury of the Storm. But, um, you know, upon closer reading, I realised it was Heart, not Fury. And this starts out the typical speed you expect from this power metal band. It's another great song with pace and a catchy chorus. Any Dragon Force fan will enjoy this song, especially as I would say it has the best solos on it, you know. It has a really nice dueling guitar solo. I barely ever hear any um, single guitar solos in Dragon Force. It's always dueling, so they're always trying to create that free bed effect in every song. And that's one of the reasons I like them. I always love a good old dueling guitar solo. I still think no one's ever done it as well as Land Skin as Free Bird. But, um, you know, I, I think they make a good effort, and, you know, any speed, any speed metal fan's mouth will drop with awe. So, then we get to Die by the Sword, which starts off a really great riff and excellent vocals, with another chorus, and it's just another great Dragon Force song. I mean, it just shows that, you know, they are on form with this album. Then we get to Last Man Stands, which is the last song on the album, and it starts out quite gently before speeding up. And the song, it's very typical for this album, comes in at about four minutes with the usual dose of speed and catchiness. It's a nice song to end the album, and certainly it's a very consistent album overall. 
So in conclusion, I think that any Dragon Force fan will enjoy this album, as I believe it is their best since Inhuman Rampage. The only thing about this album that disappointed me really was the song length. I've always enjoyed the more epic Dragon Force songs, you know, the stuff they're famous of, Through the Fire and the Flames and the Fury of the Storm, or even things like Heroes of Our Time. Yeah, they're the songs I like. But, um, you know, I, I would have liked at least one proper epic song. I didn't think that Wings of Liberty did the epic song, you know, sort of criteria justice, really. Still, I do enjoy the more radio-friendly four-minute songs a lot. And considering I thought this album, it, I thought it was going to be average. I've never been a major Dragon Force fan. I've only really started getting them into them more quite recently. So I thought this album was going to be alright, but I was presently supplied. Uh, 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 I messed up those words there. I was pleasantly surprised, and it's it isn't album of the year, but it's certainly a great addition to my collection. And I give this album a 7.5 out of 10. So yeah, um, that's been my review of Dragon Forces: The Power Within. I hope you enjoyed. So as usual, comment, rate, subscribe. Thanks for watching and long live rock and roll.